Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, a guest, recurring guest, the beast, Mr. Paul Diano. What's going on, Paul? Ah, not much. <laughs> well, I guess a lot much. At least you're not in a coma. I heard you were in a coma. I go, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah fucking hell. Walking around like I'm in one most of the days. I was so bored. But uh, yeah, where the fuck did they find that from? I don't know. Jesus. I, I don't know what these people are like. They've got nothing better to do. I bet the guy's sitting down in his basement at his mum's house and he's all a bit of mischief off here and there. You know, and I'm like, oh, God, what's the matter with you? It's, it's not about me. It's like, you know, if my, if my missus had got, which she did, <laughs> read it, or my kids had read it, they were like, what the fuck is happening? You know, like, he's in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he's a... <laughs> yeah. Craziness, craziness. Yeah, okay. You know, I... I'm not... I'm not with my family at the minute because I'm trapped over in England. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're not going to go through your whole health issues because we've talked about it so many times and I'm sure you're tired of talking about it. Oh, but, no, yes. <laughs> but I mean, just a quick 30 second summary. Right. Uh, I've still got two knees to be done yet. Uh, so I haven't walked yet for four years. It's really ridiculous. Wow. Um, as I said, um, essentially they've got cement spacer in the right knee. Left knee's coming out next. Unfortunately, my surgeon, as I told you before, he's one of the best in the country. Uh, but it's not like the hospital says, okay, you're coming in for this operation at this date. Yeah, he's yeah. the one who books, he books you. Right? Not So not the hospital. So you're, you're on a sort of bit of a loser there as well because he also takes care of a lot of our troops who come over with you know, amputations and stuff like that. Yes, um, yes. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'll try and convince myself that you know our troops come first as far as I'm concerned. Um, sometimes I'm sitting there in despair and I'm thinking, oh, fuck it, no, why me? But I've got to wait for him and we're hoping, like, soon after New Year and that I'll get in and get the left knee done. Once that's done and been replaced, uh, as I said to you, I've got to get up and uh, learn to get up on crutches. But the way I'm saying it is if that's a start. And if I can hop about on crutches, it means I can get about on aeroplanes. Yeah, yeah, it must be weird not walking for so long for four years, right? I mean, I'm fucking terrified, mate. I've even tried it because, well, see, the thing is, when I caught sepsis, they won't touch you for two years in any operations whatsoever. You know, just in case you know it all goes wrong and they don't want to take the blame for anything. And then, unfortunately, when I did go and have the right knee removed, I caught this thing called MRSA. Which you get from hospitals, no matter how clean wow. they are. Wow. You get this bug, yeah. It's, it's all over the world, MRSA. I think you might have a different name for it over there. But that's what happened. I caught that twice, which is a pain in the fucking arse, to be honest with you. So that sort of delayed things a bit. And when it, they, when it delay, it goes into sort of uh, ulceration. But, uh, so it's just an horrible, horrible situation. I'm battling against it at the moment. You know, the left knee's looking pretty good. Um, or oh, left leg's looking all right. But the, the right one's absolutely destroyed. It's wow. going to be a very, very complicated operation. Anyway, fuck all that. Let's get on with some music. Anyways, we wish you all the best in 2020. Hopefully, everything will turn around and everything will be for the best. But the good news is yeah. the a new live album coming out January 31st uh, Hell Over Wild Trop Live in Germany on Metalville yeah. Records. Um, yeah. You know, give us a little bit about this album and, 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 and how it was found. And when we were on tour and that. Which recorded a lot of nights with Thomas and his sound engineer at my front of the house. And um, oh, he's, he's a great guy, and that we've been friends for a long, long time. And that was the weirdest concert we've sort of played because it was like a, it's mostly a, a sort of pop stuff on the on the bill that time. I remember that much because it's been, it's been a while, you know, since we played that. And, you know, I do a lot of other shows in between, so I can't remember it all. But yeah. um, what happened is that um, there's this bloke on there called Sidney Youngblood, whoever the fuck he is, I've never heard of him before, and a few others who were like some, some sort of pop stars and all this crap, and we're like, oh, blimey, we're, we're sort of like, uh, you know, we're sort of like the misfits on the bill, but unfortunately, but unfortunately there was a load of metalheads there as well, which is brilliant. Okay. Uh, we went out there and just basically scared the piss out of all the other punters who were there, and, yeah. uh, all the metal fans loving it, but the thing is, we had such a horrible on-stage sound, because uh, the, the the guy was from the festival, and obviously he only did with silly punk like pop bands and 
you know, um, didn't have a clue what to do with like a rock band. So I sort of screwed up a little bit. And a couple of months back, I, I got a message from Thomas uh, from Germany and I said, oh, look, I found the tapes and that. He said, I've cleaned them up. What do you think of this? And that was it. The set list. I mean, it's a great set list. I mean, because you got a little bit of Maiden, you got a little bit of Battle Zone, you got some Killers in there. It's really <sighs> mixing it up. And and I got to say, it's probably one of your best sort of uh, set list on your live albums. Uh, you're probably another six months away before mm. you hit the stage, before you uh, record something new. I'm you... back in training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to learn to walk, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. I guess you could still do the wheelchair thing on stage. But where do you foresee? I mean, you're writing music. Are you talking with bands? We, we have been we have been writing uh, a little bit, and uh, we went in to do a demo of uh, some stuff and that. Uh, I can't say too much about it, but it wasn't what I really wanted in the end. It didn't sort of turn out to what I wanted. Uh, so I'm working with a friend of mine, who's um, we, we've known each other all our lives pretty much, um, and it's the guy Chop Pittman from. Uh, from Air Force, who Doug Sampson plays for as well. So uh, Chop's uh, coming up with a couple of ideas and sent a bit over to me the other day, and uh, it's not bad, actually. Uh, but the thing is, I want, I want it complete, and then we'll see how we go from there. Like, Where do you, where do you see it? You, you see it sort of like uh, sort of the Architects of Chaos style, like classic heavy metal, or, or you see it heavier, or you lighter, or... Heavier, <laughs> heavier, okay, right. heavier. But it will be, it will be back to sort of like classic metal sort of thing, you know, sort of mixture of sort of Sabbathy type stuff and whatever, you know. Yeah. Where I sort of have a delve into that. See, I, I, I thought the idea of being a musician was to learn and do different things all the time, not to stick to one niche. Um, that can be a bit, a bit suicidal, I suppose. But uh, I do like to have a go now and again. So you know, this is a sort of mixture of a bit of like. Sort of, punk metal sort of stuff which is what i do i want to try and venture into something a little bit different but it will be heavy that's for sure yeah i remember you did a doug sampson air force you did a a song with them recently correct i've done two songs with them yeah yeah um i just i just finished one a couple of weeks back uh, when the boys come down to visit me and we went we, down to a little studio in salisbury I had to go down there and just done some tracks with them. I can't remember a big title of the track now. The other one was Sniper, but they'd both be coming out on the albums. And, that's, and Chop, the guitar player, I've, as I said, I've, me and Chop grew up in the East End um, okay. all our lives. So I said to Chop, you know, come up a couple of ideas for us. And he's like, yeah, okay. And it, as I said, he sent me one over the other day. But obviously, let's get Christmas and New Year out of the way. And they had a couple of shows on over in Tenerife and that to do. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get something off him soon. All right, cool. Uh, what about uh, Battlezone? I know you talked, last time we spoke, maybe a year ago, even less than a year ago, <laughs> you're talking about maybe, maybe reuniting Battlezone uh, for yeah. for another album. And, any news I'd, on that? Yeah, I would love to. I'd, I really would love to. But as I said, you know, um, oh, I think first and foremost is I've really got to sort of concentrate on my health. For uh, sure, for sure. And I think coming out with something like a new album would be great, you know, um, with Battlezone or without. At, at the moment, it's all up in the air at the minute, as I said. I can't make any, any definite plans until I've had all yeah, this done. Yeah, for sure. And that's what, that's what Kiss is. It's like Kiss in my heart big time, you know, and I'm like, everyone's offering me shows left, right and centre. I want me to get back to Argentina as quickly as possible. Um, and Brazil, obviously, and uh, I just got offered uh, to me one of my dream shows, like uh, go back, go back to Israel, Tel Aviv, and play, you know, get back to the home country, and I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, but unfortunately, I just sort of said, uh, you know, tentatively yes, and you know, see how we go from there. <laughs> you, you know, it's amazing. Like I, I know it's all the threads, you know, online. And always people talking about Made in Japan as the best Iron Maiden live album. Really? Uh, I, 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 well, either that, that and Life After Death. You know, yeah. th th those are the two that the, the fans love the most from all the live albums. I don't know. What do you think it's so special about, like, for me, I, I remember buying it when it came out, right? And I loved it. But mm -hmm. why do you think fans, you know, love that album so much? Is it the raw energy of the band or the, 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 the just the overall package of it? I 
What's your I opinion? Wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't know, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I, I would probably go for the raw energy of it, to be honest with you. I mean, blimey, we've suddenly, you know, we've been playing all these little places like clubs and small pubs around London and, and all over the country. And the next thing we know, we're out in Japan. We're like, oh, blimey, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you know, you're, you're, a bit, you're a bit sort of uh, shell-shocked, to be honest with you. And uh, you're full of it when you're young, aren't you? You're like, ah, oh, let's have it, you know, nothing can stop you. And I think that came across quite well, actually. Were you opening up or you were headlining in Japan, that show? No, uh, headlining. So, I mean, there must be, since there was, what, five tracks originally on Made in Japan, there must be like a whole set somewhere. There could possibly be, yeah. Because if you're recording the five songs, chances are you recorded the whole show. I mean, well, that well, that'll be down to what's more with uh, Steve Harris and Doug, Doug Hall, I guess, uh, who was there. But um, I don't, I don't know if there was any kept over. I'm not sure. Maybe we just concentrated on them songs. You yeah. know, you, you never know. As I said, it's too, too far back for me to remember. To be honest with you, I don't, I don't. Well, we must have recorded the whole show, surely. But maybe they were so bad they didn't bother you. Well, I mean, there is a long version of Made in Japan, right? From other shows in Japan. I guess it was a radio broadcast or whatever it was. It's a bootleg. And, and you can oh. hear the whole concert. I'm not sure if you ever heard it, but... No, I haven't, no. <laughs> you should go online. It's there. And uh, you can you can actually listen to the... You know, it's pretty good, actually. Actually, it's it's good quality, too. So oh, these are the long versions like, of Made I'm... in Japan. Yeah. Oh, I don't like listening to my voice when I was younger. Oh, a squeaky little git. No, 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 no. Wait a second. No, I think all phases, all phases of Paul Diano are great. It's all good, man. It's all good. It's all yeah, good. Yeah, but it sounds sound like a little eunuch. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we're... Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, what about Killers? Actually, a cool little story that a lot of people don't know is when you got your first deal with Killers with Murder One, you, uh, you're, I guess... You, in, I guess in front of the record company before you got the deal, your showcase, you played all of Maiden material, right? Yes, we had to, yeah, up in New York and that. Because we was, we was, uh, I was living in New York at the time, so it was Cliff. Uh, we had a different lineup as well, like uh, got Steve Hopgood in. Uh, Steve and Cliff actually persuaded me to uh, like, do this. And I was like, yeah, all right then, because we were all known each other for ages. I didn't know that Cliff was living in New York, and I've been living out there for years, so was he. But we did. We never bumped into each other. It was a bit weird. But um, yeah, and then we got Steve in, and uh, it all went on from there. And yeah, it was quite interesting. We had the guy. We had uh, the guy Ray D. Tone on guitar, and we had uh, John Gallagher from Raven. Yes. Uh, you know, playing with us as well, and I've known John for, for nearly all my life as well. And it was it was quite good, but um, not quite there, if you know what I mean. We needed something better. So uh, yeah, we finally got the right lineup, and that's when we went to do the album. And uh, poor old Nick, though, he didn't last that long in the band because, uh, I don't know, he just didn't seem to fit in properly. He was so different from the rest of us. But it was good times. Yeah, but I mean, Murder One, you know, probably one of your best solo albums. I mean, in terms of material, in terms of production, mm. in terms of quality. What went mm. right, what went wrong? Was it just like the bad timing in the music industry at the... No, no, no. We've done very well on that album, I must admit. You know, sales-wise and everything. And... Uh, BMG put a lot of money into us. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was amazing. Uh, uh, we recorded everywhere, and you know, end up in the, at the uh, uh, power plant or power station um, in New York as well, which is um, where we finally finished it all off. But um, the guy we had as um, producer, I can't remember his bloody name now. Uh, he wasn't up to it. It was that Iron Maiden syndrome again, like Will Malone on the first album. wasn't really up to much. So uh, me and Steve did most of it. Um, you know, and he got he got the credit for it, the um the producer, but we done most of that, and it was it was there, but it was just like oh, you do something really successful with a record company, and then they suddenly decide they want to change you. You know, they wanted us to be uh, a bit more radio friendly mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So we sort of have a big fallout with them, and uh, that was it. We give them the finger and bug it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So getting back to the, the new live album, which is, I mean, it, the great thing about this live album is it's it's like you actually feel like you're you're there in the audience and it's that energetic and that live. I don't know if you get that vibe when you listen to it. I've only listened to a couple of teasers. <laughs> yeah. Tommy sent me over. Uh, I'll be getting a copy soon. I've still got the bloody contract sitting here right in front of me. On, oh, jeez. I haven't, I haven't signed and sent it back. I've been too bloody ill to do anything, actually. It's sort of draining all energy this at the minute. But um, 
Yeah, anyway, it's still coming out. It doesn't matter. And I was signed for Metalville with uh, Architects anyway. Um, I just hope they put as much into us as they do in Adoro. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that'd be cool. Um, oh, I'm quite happy to stay with the label as well, like for future reference as well, because they're, they're, they're good guys over there. Um, but as I said, I've heard a couple of bits and pieces of it. But um, oh, I've got this horrible thing I do. Me, once I've done something, I don't like to listen to it again. You know. Um, I, I, I'll tell you. I think it's got some. It's got a great sound production, and 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 as well, it's it, it's just got this raw energy to it that sort of surpasses any other live album you have. Oh, brilliant! Oh, that's all right then. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have I'll have one listen when it comes out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, and also I dig the set list. That's another cool thing, right? It's 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 a variety. It's not just Maiden. Yeah. Well, see that band. It was with me. Did be, they became Architects Chaos, which was a bit of a bit of a nightmare in the end, you know. Uh, well, I won't go into all that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we know the story. We know the story. Yeah, all right. Not worth having sour grapes over it. I mean, uh, where are they now? Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what about uh, you know uh, you know Judas Priest? You guys you know toured with them, of course. Uh, you know, any thoughts on their 50-year anniversary? Uh, you know, uh, KK and them joining. I mean, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Should KK come back in the band? I'm just throwing out questions now. Yeah, well, obviously you should do for the 50th anniversary, but, you know, I don't see why they, they would say no, but, you know, I have no idea, really. It would be great, actually, because um, we've been talking about, once I've got myself to go, I'm going to go uh, do a concert at um, KK Steel Mill. And that, which would be good, uh, but obviously, as I said, I said everything's all on standby at the minute. But yeah, I'd love to do that, and uh, cause I've got a lot of respect for KK. I think he's a brilliant guitar player. And that's pretty much it. I mean, is there anything else you want to tell everyone? Yeah, I'm not in a coma. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could I could talk about Iron Maiden, but we've talked about Iron Maiden so much. I, I thought we'd just like change it up today. Good idea. Yeah. It does get a bit tedious after a while. Yeah, I mean, I mean, questions can I ask you about Iron Maiden? We've talked about everything in the past. <laughs> well, so that's what I mean. And, you know, as soon as uh, what you do interviews, and the first thing they start, well, we want to ask you a little bit about Iron Maiden. And then that's mostly all the interview. Yeah, yeah. I think, oh, fucking hell. You know, I, I don't count for nothing. It does get on your nerves a little bit sometimes, but, uh, you know, but then again, as I said, I'm very proud of my heritage. Well, of course. Band, I mean, and, uh, I'm very proud of the band. And I, I, I tell you what, it'll be a very sad day when they do break up. I hope they don't, actually. You know, but then again, it's got to come to an end sometime, isn't it, for everybody? Well, it'll be interesting in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if they induct them in the next few years. What's going to happen there? You know, we're going to have another Judas Priest situation, you know. Will Paul yeah, Diano should... join them or not? <laughs> yeah, well, well, will Blaze be there as well? That's another thing. That's you another know? thing, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Blaze... Well, I've had, some, I've had some good times with Blaze on tour. We've, we've joined up together and that. It's been fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. Blaze is nut, his nutcase. <laughs> oh, he's great. Blaze is great. He's, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy. I've got a lot of respect for him and that. And he had a bit of a rough deal, actually, with, you know. We're maiden and all that stuff, or made all sort of maiden fans at first, but he sort of turned it around, and everyone sort of loves his new, you know, his, his own stuff, which is uh, he's got one over on me on that one. <laughs> yeah, but he's a hardworking guy, just like you, man. When you when you were touring, he was touring. You know, he tours just as much as you do. You know, uh, nonstop, right. nonstop. Yeah. You guys are super hardworking, man. And yeah, it's got to be that way, isn't it? That's the way to do it. That's you know, the, way the point of sitting around and thinking, oh, it's great. I've, I've done this. I've done that. Now I'll just sit back for a couple of years. I can't do that. It, I mean, this is driving me insane doing this. I, I, I've, I've definitely lost the plot completely, you know, over these last four years. I've been sort of, uh, it's, it's like being in prison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, man. So that's pretty much it. Um, thanks very much. And, uh, you know, we'll oh, you're talk very soon. Welcome. All right. Uh, all, right yeah. all the all best, Paul. Keep in touch. And, uh, you know, as soon as you got some album out or music coming yeah. out, We'll talk again. Well, you got my number, mate. Anytime you want. All right, no worries. All right, man. Talk soon. Thank you. All right, Jimmy. Take care, Bye. mate. Bye. Oh, by the way, happy New Year, mate. Happy New Year, 2020. Who thought? Yeah. Whoever thought? Whoever thought? 2020. Yeah, you know, I didn't think I was going to make fucking 1985. <laughs> <laughs> all right, later. Anyway, all right, Goodbye. mate. Have a good speech soon. Thanks, mate.